Lil B was seen as a joke by me and a lot of people until music caught up and you realize he was ahead of everybody else. Everything he did then is now you have to look at it revolutionary because everybody's copying him. Do you know about the curse of Lil B? Lil B? He really did curse Kevin Durant, right? He did curse him. And it worked. Kevin was no no part of that. It's so crazy how like how much how much Lil B music there is that is like where it felt like he was rapping on instrumentals that were like light years ahead. Uh, one thing you gotta know about the pack, and lot, they had hundreds of songs. They had a lot of songs floating around. B wrote every hook to every song. He's smart, you know what I'm saying? Like he's smarter than a lot of people realize. Like Lil B knows exactly what he's doing. Lil B was born at Brandon Christopher McCartney on August 17, 1989 in Ben Wath Children's Hospital in Oakland, California to his parents John and Desiree. As a child, Brandon was rarely seen without a smile and was highly energetic, scampering around the house for hours on end. Brandon's musical interest would begin at an early age as Brandon's mother would sing lullabies to him, sparking a creativity that would later be described by Brandon as playing a huge part in his transition into a musical artist. Another one of Brandon's first memories was him being constipated for three days. He described it in a later interview as being unique. When Brandon was two years old, his father John and mother Desiree separated. He would stay with his mother, however visited his father on weekends. At the time, Brandon's father had been balancing a desk job and a career in entertainment and would often take him to venues in which he would perform as a DJ and gift him signed vinyl records. One of Brandon's favourite pastimes was going to the movies. He would cheer from his booster seat and rate every film on a scale of 1 to 10. The only two films to receive a 10, the live action Mortal Kombat film and the sequel Mortal Kombat Annihilation. As Brandon neared his 10th birthday, tensions began to build between his parents John and Desiree, as differences in parenting styles became glaringly obvious. The tensions reached a boiling point as Desiree cut ties between father and son. Visits, phone calls and texts were prohibited. Brandon would attend Albany High School in California, where he would build an understanding of social hierarchies and independence. At the age of 15, Brandon adopted the name Lil B and began rapping using a website named OLA.com. He would take pre-existing hip hop lyrics and rearrange words to reflect his own life. At the time, he had no beats to rap over, which was an issue that was shared by producer Young L, who had no one to rap over his beats. Naturally, Lil B and Young L became friends and started working together. Lil B, together with Young L, Stunnerman and Lil Uno, would form the hip-hop group The Pack in 2004. They would record together at Young L's home studio, where they would create and release the mixtape Wolfpack Music Volume 1 in June of 2005. The Pack began to make waves in the San Francisco underground music scene and expanded their fan base due to this release. In 2006, The Pack released Wolfpack Music Volume 2 to their MySpace. The mixtape featured the song Vans. The song is about the skate shoe of the same name and features a minimalist beat, catchy hook, as well as the bass god himself rapping with a smooth flow and clever lyrics. The song would garner the attention of many hip hop fans as it spread online. It wasn't only popular with hip hop fans, however. Rapper Too Short would hear the song and subsequently sign the group to his label Up All Night Records, a subsidiary of Jive Records. And due to this, the song would peak at number 23 on the top 30 hip hop charts. Too Short mentioned in an interview that Lil B would go into the studio and create full freestyle albums. He used to like freestyle, well he called them freestyle albums. And he'd go in there and grab a bunch of beats and he'd go in the booth and one take Jake, all of them. <laughs> Under the label, they would go on to release their debut album Based Boys in 2007. Unfortunately, in 2008, the pack were dropped from their label due to lacklustre album sales. The pack would never again reach the success of Vans. They did, however, show the world a new way of blowing up in the hip hop scene, the internet. The pack would sign with the independent label Indie Pop and continue to work together. However, they would also begin to work on their solo careers. During this time, the pack created hundreds of songs. Each beat was made by Young L and each hook was written by Lil B. In 2008, Lil B officially joined YouTube and shortly after joining, uploaded his first video. It was an instructional video which showed Little B learning how to use a gun, <laughs> which has since been deleted. 
The channel has expanded massively in both content, style and popularity since then. More on that later. On September 24th, 2009, Lil B would release his first digital solo project named I'm Thrax via the independent label Permanent Marks, featuring songs like Death of Rap. Shortly after that, on December 22nd of the same year, Lil B would release his second album, Six Kiss, to critical acclaim. This album would prove to be incredibly important to the growth of modern hip hop. Many see this album as the defining moment of cloud rap, specifically due to his collaboration with the producer Clams Casino. Clams Casino would create atmospheric, misty beats with a unique spin of Imogen Heap samples, paired with Lil B's raspy and unique style, of course with the occasional ad-lib and ridiculous lyric. The two most prominent examples of this are the songs I'm God and Birth of Rap. The term cloud rap has also been attributed to Lil B. In a 2009 interview, music writer Noz spoke about the time Lil B showed him a CGI image of a castle in the clouds and said, that's the music I want to make. This collaboration would inspire ASAP Rocky, who would popularize cloud rap with his debut mixtape, Long Live ASAP, and would also go on to collaborate with Clams Casino. 2009 would also see Lil B's first flurry into other mediums, as he would write and release his first book, taken over by imposing the positive my personal rap to you published by kelly publishing the book includes a collection of email and text message style messages written in such a way that the author is emailing the reader subjects include positivity and optimism lil b also started his twitter beginning to tweet streams of positivity and most importantly nonsense that would become iconic lil b would create a second youtube channel named black man videos and upload his first video in December of 2009, where he would play with his cat. Little happy kitty, little happy kitty. The channel would include live performances, video game reviews, Terminator, f classic, I haven't played it yet, and footage of his female fans enjoying Lil B music. In 2009, Lil B released two albums, a mixtape, and a book. 2010 would become one of the most important years for the growth of Lil B's career. He would start the year by signing with Soldier Boy's record label. SODMG Entertainment, however, wouldn't remain signed for long and would collaborate with Soldier Boy to release the Pretty Boy Millionaires EP on July 5th, 2010. Lil B remained busy throughout the first half of the year and by July had recorded over 1,500 songs, which included hits like Like a Martian and Wonton Soup, both getting a lot of attention from the hip hop community on the internet. All songs were released for free through his newly created label, Based World. Not everyone was a fan of Lil B's antics, however. Rapper Joe Budden specifically took to Twitter and mocked Lil B's based movement and Twitter. This would escalate with Lil B responding with insults and eventually the diss track T-Shirts and Buttons, which was included on the Everything Based mixtape released on the 10th of July 2010. Lil B would later apologise, referring to Budden as a legend. This would be one of the first times where Lil B, or should I say the bass god, would respond negatively and actively to individuals disrespecting his music and movement. Also in the summer of 2010, a video will be released on Lil B's YouTube channel, including footage of rapper Lil Nico sucker punching Lil B. This will go viral online. Upon further research, I found two explanations for the altercation. One, where Lil B would refuse to recommend Lil Nico to Soldier Boy's label, and another, where Lil B would tell Lil Nico that his breath stinks and offer him a tic tac, both resulting in the altercation. Lil B literally took six sucker punches to the face and got up immediately after. He took those punches for our sins. Lil B's popularity on the internet continued to skyrocket throughout 2010, and music videos for songs like Wonton Soup gathered large amounts of views on YouTube. The internet responded in the way it usually does, and Based became a viral meme online. The memes would include an image with impact font text saying thank you Base God, or phrases such as Base God fucked all my bitches, referring to the beginning of Wonton Soup. Lil B would actually be the creator of a lot of these memes, especially in the early days. Essentially, creating and spreading his own viral meme. I think this is the best time to explain the origin of the terms based and base god and their meaning overall. Based originally comes from the term base head, which was slang used to describe people addicted to free basic cocaine, essentially smoking crack. This would evolve into the term based, which was often used to describe people acting abnormal or eccentric. In reaction to people calling him based as a teenager, Lil B would decide to redefine the term, later explaining a new definition. Based means being yourself, not being scared of what people think about you, not being afraid to do what you want to do. 
It's not certain when Lil B started using the term bass god, however, he has explained that he came into contact with the bass god through his bass freestyles, where he would reach a higher level within his mind, finding the bass god. The bass god became an entity separate from Lil B, able to access special powers, abilities, and most importantly, curses. Lil B officially released his debut album, Rain in England, on September 21st, 2010, which featured minimal ambient instrumentals, often void of any drum beat, accompanied by Lil B rapping about love and beauty. Lil B signed an album deal with Algamum Digital on December 29th, 2010. 2010 would prove to be not only important to the growth of Lil B as an artist, but his overall legacy and influence. Lil B experimented with beats that no other rapper would even consider at the time, opening doors for more experimentation in the future. His use of the internet, his style of rapping, and heavy use of ad-libs would go on to change hip-hop forever and inspire many. In 2010, Lil B released 13 mixtapes, one album, and created thousands of songs. 2011 would contain not only the continuation of vast amounts of genre-defining music, but beefs and controversies that will remain iconic forever. On January 18th, 2011, Lil B would release Angel's Exodus through Amalgam Digital, which would continue his pattern of rapping on a vast amount of beat styles and his work with Clams Casino. Lil B continued to receive criticism from individuals within hip hop, as rapper The Game proclaimed Lil B to be the wackiest rapper alive after hearing his feature on Lil Wayne's Grove Street Party. Lil B responded by calling The Game irrelevant, which prompted The Game to respond, threatening to knock out Lil B. The Game continued to threaten Lil B on his song Martians vs Goblins, tie Lil B up to a tank full of propane, swag, now watch him cook. Lil B would address this on the song Tank of Propane. The two quickly settled their differences shortly after when Lil B encouraged fans to purchase Game's new album, continuing his trend of disengaging conflict through positivity. Lil B was interviewed by legendary interviewer Nardwar, which would be released on March 11, 2011. Lil B would continue to confess his love for the internet and would be one of the few people to make Nardwar break character. Great! All right! <laughs> Thanks so much, Lil B. Really appreciate it. It's amazing! further proving his legendary power. Lil B would announce his next album on April 5th, 2011, entitled I'm Gay, which resulted in controversy. Lil B was heavily criticized for the choice of album title and even received numerous death threats. People saw it as a publicity stunt. However, Lil B explained its meaning to be the old meaning of gay, to be merry or happy, and titled the album as a message of support to the LGBTQ community. The album would be released digitally on July 29th, 2011, receiving mainly positive reviews and an average score of 73 on Metacritic. Lil B included themes of race relations, poverty, humanity, and the justice system, creating an inspirational and unique album. He would change the title to I'm Gay, I'm Happy in brackets due to death threats, and a day after the initial release, would post a free link to the album on his Facebook, saying, for all my fans who don't have $10 to buy my album, here it is for free, further disproving any allegations of a publicity stunt. Just before the release of I'm Gay, rapper Joey Badass would release his album 1999, which included the song Survival Tactics. On the song Capital Steve's Raps, they say hard work pays off, or till the bass god don't quit his day job. Lil B responded with his own diss track entitled I'm the Badass which prompted Joey Badass to respond with the song Don't Quit Your Day Job. The feud later spread to Twitter, where Joey received many attacks from Lil B fans. Joey would delete his Twitter account, but denied it had anything to do with Lil B fans. In a later interview, Joey Badass admitted that the feud was created for a publicity stunt and claimed he was a fan of Lil B's more serious work. Around the same time, Lil B was announced as a XXL freshman, which is a yearly tradition in which hip-hop magazine XXL dedicated issue to upcoming artists. Lil B would be involved in an interview, solo a cappella, and a group cypher. Lil B would emphasize the importance of the internet during the group interview and perform in the cypher alongside Yellow Wolf, Kendrick Lamar, and Saehee the Prince. Lil B remained shirtless throughout the entire production. In August 2011, rapper David Banner would release the song Swag, which contained a Lil B diss. Let a white cop shoot a black kid. You'll see a few tweets, that's it. He'll march for a minute, that's it get a new outfit and dance like this, cook, swag, woo, cook, swag, woo. Lil B responded with the song I Own Swag, in which he claimed he was more famous than Banner. Lil B would go viral again in 2011 through his signature move, the cooking dance. Lil B would refer to many of his songs as cooking music through his YouTube tags and titles. These songs provide the ideal audio to perform the cooking dance. 
The dance involves the performer simulating various kitchen maneuvers such as stirring a pot, putting a tray into the oven, and even eating the prepared meal, although there was room for vast amounts of experimentation. The cooking dance was inspired by a Chopper music video. Lil B would see the dance and put his own originality on it to create the cooking dance. Lil B would perform the dance in various music videos and create a tutorial which he posted on his YouTube channel. The dance became a viral sensation in 2011, spreading to athletes and celebrities and remains popular to this day. 2011 would see Lil B continue to define the genre, releasing some albums that are seen as classics today. Not only did he release vast amounts of amazing music, he cemented himself as a cultural icon through the use of the internet. In 2011, Lil B released two albums and 11 mixtapes. The Kevin Durant saga began in 2011 and spanned six years. I feel the only way to tell this story properly is by giving it its own segment, so we'll return to 2012 after. For those of you who don't know, Kevin Durant is an American professional basketball player. In 2011, Kevin Durant would tweet, I tried to listen to Lil B and my mind wouldn't let me do it. Can't believe this guy is relevant. Lil B would respond, but he wasn't alone. He would adopt the powers of the base god. Kevin Durant will never win the title after he called Lil B a whack rapper, the base god's curse on Durant. Kevin Durant said that he would play Lil B in a game of 21 and Lil B agreed to lift the curse if this happened. Kevin Durant would never show up to the one-on-one. -on -one. The curse began to take its toll. In the 2012 NBA Finals, Kevin Durant's team, the Oklahoma City Thunders, lost to the Miami Heat. Lil B would lift the curse in June of 2012 and the dust settled on this feud for a few years. Lil B would release the song Fuck Kevin Durant in 2014, once again cursing KD. The Thunders would lose to Lil B's home team, the Golden State Warriors, in the Western Conference Finals of the 2016 NBA Playoffs. The Thunders would lose in spectacular fashion after being 3-1 up in a best of seven series and going on to lose the following three games. Lil B appeared on ESPN's Sport Nation on the 9th of June 2016, where he would be carried onto the set on a chariot as flower petals rained from above. He went on to explain his various curses and why they occurred. He also explained how it was the base god performing the curses, who was a separate entity from Lil B himself. Many at the time noticed Lil B's choice of attire. On July 4th, 2016, Kevin left the Thunders to join Lil B's home team, the Golden State Warriors. Some speculate that he knew the only way to stop the curse was to join Lil B's home team. He knew the curse would follow him to any other team. Lil B lifted the curse shortly after. 2012 would see the bass god continue to release large amounts of music, on average releasing a new mixtape every three weeks. Lil B utilised this year to expand his vision and art, free of petty beefs to distract him. On May 7th, 2012, Lil B released his first instrumental project under the alias The Bass God. The project was named Choices and Flowers and presented Lil B's production talent to the world. Lil B would continue to experiment with his music, releasing a rock song named California Boy on September 16th, 2012. 2012 would produce some of B's most iconic songs and proved his range as an artist. In 2012, Lil B released two instrumental albums and 17 mixtapes. On Christmas Eve in 2013, Lil B released 05 Fuck'em, which contained 101 songs and was six hours long. Most projects in hip-hop at the time were much shorter, around the 40 minute mark, and this remained that way until relatively recently. Longer albums have become far more trendy in hip-hop in recent years, whether that's due to artists abusing the streaming service system which favours longer albums, or the eternal inspiration that is the bass god. Well, I'll leave that up to you. In 2013, Lil B released four mixtapes. 2014 will be most well known for the peak of the Kevin Durant saga within Lil B's career, which I covered earlier. June 1st, 2014, we'll see the release of the iconic mixtape Hoop Life, which contained the song Fuck Kevin Durant. Lil B released the Ultimate Bitch mixtape on October 14th, 2014, which contained the song No Black Person Is Ugly. The song became an instant favourite and was praised as being a straight to the point, empathetic unfurling of Lil B's mind. Also in late 2014, Lil B would design and release an app called Based Emoji. The app allows iPhone users to use Lil B themed emojis in their text messages. 2014, Lil B released three mixtapes and an app. 2015 would begin tragically for Lil B, as on January 16th, Lil B's apartment complex caught on fire early in the morning after an electrical fire spread through the building. Lil B will be staying up late on his computer, and around 3am he began to smell an unusual smell. Three minutes later, his neighbour let everyone in the building know. Lil B wants to take the most important thing from his apartment, so he took his music and escaped unharmed. 
This situation is what motivated Lil B to begin channeling his trauma into artwork. Lil B would remain hard at work releasing another app in collaboration with a vegan company named Follow Your Heart. The app is named Vegemoji and has a very similar function to the previously mentioned based emoji, allowing you to use vegetable themed emojis. Lil B created Vegemoji to spread positivity, sustainability and a healthy plant-based lifestyle with the world. During the 2015 NBA season, basketball player James Harden was seen doing Lil B's legendary cooking dance during his celebrations. Lil B demanded answers over Twitter. James Harden denied any knowing of Lil B in his career, which was shortly proven to be false as he had tweeted about him prior. Due to Harden refusing to credit Lil B for the celebration, Lil B placed the base god's curse upon him, officially announcing it on TMZ Sports on May 24th, 2015. Two days later, on May 27th, Harden's team, the Houston Rockets, lost to the Golden State Warriors, making the Warriors the Western Conference champions. Lil B would release the curse on June 21st, 2017. In 2015, Lil B released two mixtapes and an app. 2016 would be a quiet year for Lil B. He would take the time to try and become more attuned with nature. Lil B would publish various videos titled Lil B in Nature, where Lil B would document his experience with the world around him. This is Lil B with a way better view of my friend right here. Looks like a dragonfly mixed with uh, some other stuff. Very relaxed right now. Hey, this is Lil B. I want to say, got a chance to find a rare specimen. Um, looks something uh, maybe related to... Uh, I want to say like a grasshopper of some sort or a spider. Uh, this is a little bee, little bee in nature. Really excited. Here's a little bee, little bee in nature. I got a bee just wanting to come talk to me and he keeps uh, flying on. Little bee in nature. Although not a vegan, little bee is constantly being against the death of animals and is against the promotion and consumption of meat. In 2016, Lil B remained musically quiet apart from a handful of features. On August 17th, 2017, Lil B released Black Ken, which was touted as his first official mixtape. The mixtape reached number 24 on the Top Heart Seekers charts and number 44 on the Independent Albums charts. The mixtape would go on to be featured as number 43 on Pitchfork's Top 50 Best Albums of the Year. Lil B will be featured on the Rolling Loud Bay Area Festival lineup in October 2017. He was, however, forced to cancel his set due to an altercation backstage. Lil B was jumped by rappers, a boogie with a hoodie, and PB Rock, as well as their crew. Literally 15 people with designer backpacks on attacking one man. Apparently, this is considered tough. He would still go on stage to profess his forgiveness for the individuals who attacked him. Hey, but I'm gonna tell y'all like this. It's all love, I don't promote violence, I'm never with the violence, so I love them and it's all good, you feel me? And explained how he would not be able to perform due to stolen equipment and medical issues. In response, Rolling Loud removed PNB Rock from their next festival lineup. The altercation stemmed from a group of Lil B tweets where he made fun of Boogie's song, Drowning, and described his singing style as crying. Boogie took offence to this and proceeded to attack Lil B at the festival. Lil B would continue to tweet about his forgiveness for the two rappers and their crew. The incident immediately led to a wave of support from figures within the hip-hop industry. Schoolboy Q and Travis Scott would express their support for the rapper on stage at the festival. Protect Lil B at all fucking costs, motherfucker! And countless other artists including Skepta, Big Sean and G-Eazy would support the rapper on social media. The feud was officially ended two days later when Lil B tweeted about a phone call he had had with Boogie where they had talked things over and ended the beef. 2017 would be a successful year for Lil B. Not only did he release what many see as his best project, he reminded the world through action that positivity trumps negativity and violence. In 2017, Lil B released just one mixtape. Lil B has continued to release at least two projects a year since 2017, most of which have over 30 songs and are over two hours long. He has remained out of the mainstream news for the majority of this time, but remains on the internet, constantly interacting with fans and spreading positivity. Lil B follows over a million people on Twitter, each done by his own two hands. Lil B's song, Ski Ski Bass Chord, would become famous on TikTok. A version of the song which is sped up and pitch shifted is played over footage, of teenagers stealing items, mostly from their school or work. The trend is called Devious Licks. I tried to find a response from Little B, but honestly, it's literally impossible to scrub through his Twitter because it's so big. He literally posts and retweets constantly. 
I'd imagine he doesn't approve, however he did release the sped up version of the song titled Devious Licks, you already know who it is on major streaming services, so who knows. In 2020, Lil B debated putting the based god's curse on coronavirus. Before casting the curse, Lil B wanted to see whether the virus was man-made or an act of god. The curse on the virus never happened however, and I doubt it will now. Maybe he knows something that we don't. Throughout his entire career, Lil B's only goal was to improve the world through just being himself. A lot of people see Lil B as a meme or a joke, something that was fabricated to catapult himself to fame, but I don't see it in that way at all. In some of the oldest interviews I could dig up, he's still preaching the same message of positivity. Regardless of his age or situation, he still had one goal in mind. He was truly open-minded, leading him to go against hip-hop trends at the time and experiment with countless styles of beats, opening the doors for artists in the future. He changed the way people looked at hip-hop, especially the younger generation. Hip-hop stardom always seemed like a distant goal, something that wasn't possible without connections or a lot of luck. Lil B changed that, releasing a constant stream of low-budget music and music videos that showed people that they can do the same, and that's exactly what they did. Many artists contribute their success and style to Lil B, and countless more have been inspired without even realising it. I just want to end this documentary by saying thank you. Thank you for bringing me countless hours of joy. Thank you for making hip-hop more accessible. Thank you for constantly pushing the boundaries of what hip-hop artists can be. Thank you for spreading the message of positivity. Thank you, Based God. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and leave a comment explaining your favourite Lil B memory. If you want to see more content similar to this, please consider subscribing, and maybe you could even go all out and hit the bell notification. More shorter videos are coming very soon. If you'd like another similar documentary on another artist, make sure to let me know in the comments.